everyone. This is Evan from First Updates Now, and I'm here with Team 4795, the East Bats. They have had a great season so far, winning the Week 1 Orange County event and placed high at the UNC Asheville event. I'm here with them at the North Carolina District Championships, and we'll be looking at their strategy, what went into their ro overall robot design, some of their controls and camera systems, along with some of the custom stuff they did as well with sensors and all the like. All this coming right up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. So to start off, Wesley, can you tell us a little bit more about the design and strategy that went into all of this? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so we started off the season at kickoff uh, with a large strategy meeting. Uh, where we uh, try to find a way to maximize our team resource for, max uh, for maximum competitiveness. And we decided that we will uh, prioritize uh, a speaker and amp uh, over a shooter. As you can see, we do not have a shooter, in fact. Climber. Uh, uh, oh, a uh, climber. Uh, I'm sorry. I <laughs> um, will prioritize a shooter over climber. Um, the first thing kind of we decided was we will have a shooter on a variable angle pivot. Um, the pivot is over here. We can adjust the uh, angle of the arm to decide um, um, uh, to shoot from different range. Uh, and we were inspired by Team Rembrandt's 44, uh, 4481 um, the sh for the Schemper mechanism, uh, where um, we can't when the two shooter rollers are spinning in the opposite direction, uh, it squeezes the nose out in between the two rollers, like uh, most teams do. Uh, but when the two rollers are spinning in the same direction, it would guide the nose to the side and leave the shooter tower from uh, a second exit on the side. So when the arm is in the up position, um, and we drive up to the amp, and we can score uh, amp uh, from the side of our shooter. Um, this has been working uh, pretty, uh, super well for us. Um, because of the large uh, range of motion uh, the arm requires, um, it inherently introduces a big gap between our intake uh, and the uh, handoff. And this gap, we try to find a lot of ways to overcome it. Um, we have several iterations of the intake. Uh, so we used um, polycarb tube with silicone roller, uh, set up a dead axle setup uh, with custom tube plugs. And we have um, the small uh, 3 printed roller deflectors. So it sends this roller to the middle of, uh, of the intake and gets sent up to the uh, handoff. Uh, because um, um, we really want to be able to mess around with the geometry of the handoff. So we made custom uh, compliant wheels. We print, 3D printed our own mold and hub uh, and uh, casted those wheels. And they have been working great for us. We were able to customize the color to match our color scheme as well. Um, and uh, we ran through several versions of the intake. Uh, it's very swappable. Uh, this is our old uh, version that we ran at um, uh, Asheville. Uh, it got bent several times, so we added a lot of reinforcement going to the last version. And uh, so far, it hasn't had any problems, so we'll see if we can. Awesome. That way. And I see a lot of 3D printed parts on your robot. What, can you talk me through a little bit of the custom parts you use for this? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we use a lot of 3D printed pulleys. Uh, we chose 3D printed pulley over metal pulley because we realized that the flange on the metal pulley also got knocked off. While if you use 3D printed pulleys, it would just take a little chunk off of the flange instead of like the whole flange coming off. So it's actually stronger in some ways. Uh, we also used a 3D printed camera mount. Uh, 3D printed two plugs and a lot of um, semi-structural component of the robot um, and they've been working great. Um, we use a lot of uh, strong filaments. We used uh, polycarbonate for our uh, cust uh, for our um, sword wheels. Uh, they've been working great. Um, we, on average, we need to swap them every uh, four to five matches. Uh, they're very easy to swap, very easy to work with. Um, and yeah. Awesome. Do you want to pass it over to Sanjay to talk a little bit about the sensors and controls that go into this? Mm. 
So for sensing, no, while it goes through the various stages of our mechanism, we start the intake where we know if it's past the intake for the reading current limits of the motors. And from this, we can tell if there's a note in there, if there's not a note in there, and then where it moves on to the handoff. And in the handoff, we have a high LIGO sensor right here. And this will detect, um, just like a limit switch, yes or no is the note in its vision, beam break. So after that, we'll know exactly when we have a note in stored inside here, so we won't be able to intake any more notes if we have something in here, and we'll be, and everything will be easily automated for that. Um, other than that, we don't really have much going on for the sensors. Awesome, if you want to pass it over to Al and talk a little bit about the programming and vision in here. Sure. Um, so a big thing we uh, wanted to get right this year was our vision system, uh, because we knew that having accurate pose odometry this year was going to be very important for a number of um, accuracy reasons. So for that, we have three AppleTag cameras in the front. These are all monochrome cameras, and they connect into two orange pies that do uh, our vision processing. Uh, and for these, we are able to gather a, um, a pose estimate that we fuse with score of odometry to give us um, where we are on the field. And then based on that, we can align to a, dump, a bunch of different targets uh, by running a control loop on our Pigeon 2 IMU. Um, so for example, we use the, um, we mainly align to speaker, but we can also align to a shuttle set point and we also align to the source. Um, and then for here we have our fourth camera that, um, this is an intake camera. Um, it's a, a color camera that's running a note detection pipeline. And for this, we are using to automate our, um, somewhat automate or assist in our driver uh, intaking at the source or just intaking in the midfield. And whenever it sees a note, the driver will um, swap over to what we like to call note relative drive, where if the driver presses the joystick forward, it'll go directly towards the note. Uh, and if it's the uh, joystick's come, uh, full reverse, it'll go directly away from the note and every, uh, and uh, all the other directions would work, something like that. Awesome, that's, that's a really cool system for note detection and vision. Well, this is Team 4795, the eSpots. They've had a great season so far and looking good heading into DCMP playoffs. And I wish you guys the best of luck during the competition. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.